Hello everyone, this is Richard from Modern Health Span. Today we'll have a look at paper which is in bioarchive, so it is a preprint. We think that it's really interesting as it shows the mechanism of action for calorie restriction and rapamycin are distinct. This has a number of implications, not least of which is that the effects can be additive. Let's have a look at the paper. But first a disclaimer that in this video we are sharing a study that we found interesting. It is not a recommendation or medical advice. Here is the paper. Distinct and additive effects of calorie restriction and rapamycin in aging skeletal muscle. Maintaining muscle quality is important as we get older. Calorie restriction has been shown to be effective to extend health and lifespan but is very difficult for people to follow. Therefore there is a search for CR mimetics, substances which have the same effect on the body without following a CR diet. Rapamycin, an inhibitor of mTORC1, has been proposed as one of these CR mimetics. The study was to test whether rapamycin had a similar effect on the body as CR. Unexpectedly the effects of CR and rapamycin were different. Another thing they noticed was that CR worked even when mTOR activity was not inhibited. So it seems that CR and rapamycin have distinct and compounding effects on aging skeletal muscle, opening the possibility to parallel interventions which work together to counteract muscle aging. Let's have a look at some of the results that they saw. The first experiment was to look at the effect on CR of aging mice. Here they had some control mice and some at 65% calorie restriction. Unsurprisingly they saw a reduction in fat mass and relative increase in lean mass. Here is the grip strength. Here and in subsequent slides CON is for control and CR for calorie restriction. The 20M refers to the mouse age in months. We can see in the top graph that the mice all had similar grip strength. However this did mean that relative to body weight the CR mice did better. However this graph shows that the decline over time and we can see that the CR mice in blue declined at about the same rate as the normal mice just from a higher starting point. CR also affected glucose tolerance. We can see here that in the glucose tolerance test where the mouse was injected with glucose and the time to clear monitored the CR mice did much better, clearing faster and having a lower area under the curve. One thing I did find interesting is that CR mice chose to run more even though they had less calorie intake. I won't go into this page in detail but it is showing the improvements in muscle function of the CR mice. This graph shows relative muscle mass improvements compared to age match controls where the purple graph shows the improved relative muscle mass and a similar story with strength compared to body weight. They then looked at the transcriptome of mice on CR and rapamycin to see if the same genes were being activated. The transcriptome shows which genes are being expressed. They saw that rapamycin reversed the majority of age related genes whereas CR had the opposite effect. And the genes that responded to both treatments predominantly were regulated in the opposite direction. The markers of inflammation were lowered by both CR and rapamycin, except for IFN gamma, which was lowered by the rapamycin but not by CR. One interesting test they did was to look at transgenic mice, which had an overactive mTOR that would not respond to normal inhibition signals, as the team thought that CR acted through mTOR inhibition. Here in the graphs, we can see the comparison between the two red bars, wild type, is similar to that with the always active mTOR, the green bars. This shows that CR has a similar effect whether mTOR is active or not. They then looked at combining rapamycin with calorie restriction. We can see that rapamycin had less of an effect on body mass and composition, although we can see in graph B it helped reduce body mass. But it did help maintain grip strength as the animals got older with CR plus rapamycin having the strongest relative grip strength. We can see that the mice with CR and rapamycin chose to run further and also had a faster running speed. However the time hanging from the grid was greater for those with CR only. 
The author's conclusion was that CR and rapamycin worked through different, distinct pathways, which were non-overlapping and frequently produced additive effects in aging skeletal muscle. This lack of commonality raises the possibility of having multiple additive interventions to counteract sarcopenia. Further work is needed to isolate the individual processes and determine the optimal strategy. So this would imply, even if taking rapamycin, that calorie restriction could add further value. I hope you found the video informative. Please do hit the thumbs up button, subscribe to our channel and hit the bell button for any new video release notifications. Thank you so much for your kind support. I wish you all well and we'll speak to you again soon.